Today on Horrifically Radioactive Things You Could Buy on eBay, uh, we're going to talk about this Pyrotronics F3 smoke detector. But before I get into this, I need to talk a little bit about um, consumer uh, smoke detectors and how those work, just to kind of give you an idea of what's going on. These use a tiny bit of radioactive material, americium-241, and it sits inside of this little chamber here. And so what happens is, is that that radioactive material that emits alpha radiation can only travel a couple inches in air. And so it actually ionizes the air inside of here, completing a circuit. So when the smoke enters into this little chamber here, it interrupts that circuit and alerts you that there's smoke in the room. In these type of smoke detectors, there's usually around 0.3 microcuries of americium-241. And that's fairly small, and they will be very active if you get close to them. But again, that alpha radiation only travels about a couple inches in air. The Pyrotronics F3 smoke detector uses radium-226 and uses 20 microcuries of radioactive material, which comes out to about 20 micrograms of radium-226 inside of the smoke detector. So this is considerably more radioactive uh, because it has more radioactive material and it also emits a lot of gamma radiation in addition to alpha and beta radiation. The problem is though, is that with the gamma radiation, it is considerably harder to shield completely against it because it can travel through metal, concrete, all types of materials, making it very difficult to shield. Okay, I'm gonna put this away from me for a little bit. Radium has had a bunch of uses since it was discovered by Marie Curie in 1898. It's been used to treat cancers, it's been used as a luminous paint, it's even been put into consumer goods as a cure-all. Of course, we later found out that radium was hazardous to living things, but at this point we had used radium for the better part of a century. So despite it taking several tons of uranium ore to make one gram of radium, it can be found pretty easily in old watches, clocks, aircraft gauges, and of course, smoke detectors. So let's examine this Pyrotronics F3 smoke detector. Now these can be a little hard to find, but they do pop up from time to time on eBay and other sites. On the outside of the housing, there is a warning that says, avoid prolonged exposure within 15 inches of detector. Now this lets me know that this device is a bit dangerous and I should limit my time handling it or even having it next to me. The housing of this twists off and exposes a bit more information about this detector, like how much radium is used, a warning to avoid contact with radioactive foils, where to send for disposal, and some servicing notes. The radioactive foil inside of here is where the radium is contained, and that was manufactured by the U.S. Radium Corp. under the trade name Ionotron foil, which sounds kind of silly to me, but that's what they named it. This foil is made by mixing a very specific amount of radium sulfate with gold in powdered form, which is then made into a compact. This is put in between a sheet of silver and a sheet of gold, and pressed together under high pressure and heat, making a foil that keeps the radium fairly contained. This top wire mesh bit unscrews, exposing one of the radium sources in this detector. This post can actually be unscrewed and removed from the top That is the radioactive post. And this is incredibly radioactive. Just to show you. So at this range, my detector has gone into overload. So it's not even touching like not even that close. It still has maybe about two or three inches. 
So this is a very radioactive source, and I actually don't like handling it that much. <laughs> so I'm going to put it back in where it came from very carefully. Oh man. And now I'm going to check and see if I have any radium contamination anywhere. But if I just point my detector in that general region where the post is, it's, it's very intense. So just in comparison, I have some americium buttons here. I'll take one of these out. So you can see how these respond to the radiation that they emit. So I need to bring this fairly close. So this is obviously just a alpha source. That's why it the detector really doesn't really detect it until it gets almost right on top of it. Whereas the radium source is way more intense and that shows up far earlier because not only is it giving off alpha radiation, but it's also giving off that gamma radiation, which is way more penetrating and goes much, much further. Even if the source is still in its container, just on the back side of it, this, this area right here, that's where the screw is and stuff. You can see that this will also send my detector into overload. It's a very hot source. As you can see, this radioactive source sends my detector into overload. And it does this because it is far too intense for this detector to measure, and for most detectors. That's a fair warning that this source should be treated with respect and handled very carefully. And it should only be handled if you have a detector of some type that can handle this type of radiation. Even though my detector goes into overload, it's still letting me know that this is a very radioactive source. There are some detectors out there that will actually have their circuits overloaded and go back down to a much lower level, making you think that everything is okay when it is far from it. So that wasn't the only radioactive source. This container here with this disc on the top and the nut on there also contains radium inside of it. So inside of here, there is actually four pieces of radium foil posted on the inside of this. And I'll actually open it up so you can see it. This part unscrews off of the detector, exposing the chamber. Now this chamber, you can see like little mounting points on here on the black portions of this. And that's actually where the radium foil is mounted on the inside of this chamber. So this nut can actually be removed showing the inside of this chamber, which is pretty cool, but it's also a little scary because it is very intense, the level of radiation coming off of this. And it is definitely not a toy and should be treated with the utmost respect. So the inside of this is very radioactive. So it's actually sending my detector into overload at this distance. And that's pretty incredible because usually you have to be right up on a source for this detector, which isn't a high range detector, but it does a decently good job. 
it's getting overloaded. And so these are very, very radioactive sources here. So I'm going to put this all back together because it's uh, kind of terrifying to handle it, actually. And I'm trying to limit my time actually handling it. Now, it's not like it's turned off the radiation because it's still just blasting me right now. So I'm going to put this back together and uh, get it away from me because I feel like I've already spent far too much time next to this device and should really limit your exposure to devices like this because it's just very intense. And there we go. All put back together and ready to get away from me. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. I enjoyed making it. I always enjoy uh, making videos using uh, spicy radioactive sources. And if you could, just uh, leave a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. That really helped me out. And I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.